The electrolyzers of Charles Garrett and Archie Blue are interesting in that they could run cars on water alone. Charles Garrett was granted US patent 2006676 on the 2nd of July 1935 in which he shows some impressive details. Firstly, he generated an extra electrical supply by fitting a second 6 volt alternator to his car. While the drawing shows the applied voltage swapping over in polarity, this was not done rapidly but just occasionally to even up any deterioration of the electrodes. The design itself is very interesting. You have a water supply from a header tank which is higher up than this combined electrolyzer and carburetor. The water supply is fed into the actual body of the equipment via a valve which is a an intake valve, pin operated intake valve uh, which is controlled by a float. The float is given a couple of weights on top of it and the weights press down on the float. Um, if the water level is low enough then more water is fed into the system. The arrangement is very interesting. The water is fed through into the body of the electrolyzer. The electrolyzer has a number of plates. One set is marked in blue and connected to this connection here and the other set is marked in green and is connected to this connector here. The interesting way that this is organized is there is an air intake here which is blocked off by this spring-loaded plate. The adjustment at the top of the spring allows you to set the strength of the spring pull to whatever you choose to arrange it at. That combines obviously with the strength of the spring. The air incoming through there is fed via a normal throttle to the engine. Uh, these things here are the screw threads for the bolts that attach it to the engine block. There is a flap valve here which allows additional airflow. There is an another air intake here which goes through a one-way flap valve which means it can flow in this way but not out and that is pushed around through this air feed pipe which then feeds lots of little bubbles up between the plates. The idea of that is that the uh, electrolyte which is a few drops of uh, hydrochloric acid uh, in water uh, this upflow of air between the plates brushes off any bubbles of hydrogen and oxygen generated by the electrolysis. That then goes through the one-way valve out to the engine itself. This is a very effective mechanism for the way that it's supposed to operate. Charles maintained the water level in the electrolysis chamber with a neat carburetor style float and pin valve arrangement. He improved the electrodes by introducing a perforated tube below the electrode plates which allows the engine to suck up air past the plates. This cools the electrolyte, which is water with a few drops of hydrochloric acid in it, introduces water vapour to the gas mix and dislodges any bubbles on the plates without the need for any extra mechanical device. That's a neat arrangement. Considering that he did this 75 years ago, it's an impressive piece of work. Please note that while only five electrode plates are shown in the diagram, in reality it's probable that many such plates were used. One point which should be noted is that the cars of that time had very much smaller capacity engines and so they will have needed far less HHO gas mixture in order 
to run adequately. There's another electrolyzer then which is operates on very similar principles though it doesn't look anything like the uh, previous electrolyzer cum carburetor. The Archie Blue electrolyzer is made from uh, cylindrical containers with disc electrodes inside them. More than 50 years after Charles Garrett was granted his patent, another one, which is 4124463, was granted to Archie Blue. The equipment described in the two pa patents operates in more or less the same way. Archie's equipment is very simple to construct and uses straight e electrolysis with no attempt at pulsing the electrical supply. Like Charles Garrett, Archie Blue claimed to have run a car on water alone using his electrolyzer design, which is shown in this diagram here. He has an air pump which pulls air in and pushes it down through a central shaft to an air hole at the bottom of the pipe. The air is then contrained, or constrained I should say, with a, a deflector plate which then pushes the air up through the electrolyte and through a set of perforated circular electrodes. The holes in those electrodes are not aligned so you don't get a, a flow straight up but the flow is staggered to be zigzag through the electrolyte all the way up to the top. The Gauss output then has a shield against splashing or drops of water being bounced up when the car goes over bumps. With this unit, air is sucked out of the exit pipe by the vehicle engine, which by while being pumped into the electrolyzer also by the air pump. The air flows down through the central pipe and is forced up through the non-aligned holes in the electrode plates, causing turbulence and probably the formation of water gas clusters. The air bubbles also stir the electrolyte into vigorous motion, dislodging the hydrogen and oxygen bubbles which then form on the plates as a result of the electro electrolysis current flowing through the plates. It will also mix water vapour into the outgoing gas. It is said that six of these electrode electrolysis units are sufficient to run a car using just water as the fuel. It's been stated that electrolysis of water is optimum at 1.5 volts so it might be more efficient to connect the units electrically in series where each unit receives 2 volts rather than in parallel where each of the six units re receives 12 volts. Unless of course the heating caused by connecting them in parallel is a factor in the very high efficiency of Archie Blue's system. The electrical connections are straightforward. You have the choice of either connecting them in series and getting one and a half volts across each or connecting them in parallel so you get 12 volts across each. The arrangement of the gas pipe is that the air goes th in through the air pump and is sucked obviously also by the um, intake stroke of the um, cylinders uh, but the gas the air goes in the gas mix comes out of the first one goes into the second one comes out of the second one as a, a strengthened gas mix goes into the third comes out of the third as a strengthened gas mix goes into the fourth goes out of the fourth as an even more strengthened gas mix, goes into the fifth, comes out of the fifth as an even more enhanced gas mix, goes into the sixth, goes out of the sixth as the most highly charged um, HHO gas mix that you get from these, and it's passed then to the car input, where it enters the car via the uh, air inflow as normal. The air connection is the same for either method of wiring the cells electrically. 
If wired in series, the voltage drop across each cell may not be the same even though they were constructed in an identical fashion. Please bear in mind that you should modify that if you should modify a vehicle to run on hydrogen, either as an additive or as a replacement for petrol, you need to clear it with your insurance company before using it on a public road. Otherwise, you will be driving without insurance, since any alteration to the vehicle automatically invalidates the insurance if the insurer is not notified and agrees to the change. You may, of course, modify any stationary engine or any vehicle which you only run on private property. In the USA, the oil companies have influenced the local courts to such a degree that in some states it's an offence to, quote, run a vehicle on a non-approved fuel, unquote. In passing, you may be interested to hear that I have been told that the Prohibition era in America had nothing at all to do with people drinking alcohol. The reality was that in the early days, Henry Ford was going to have his Model T car running fuel-less by using a Nikola Tesla designed magneto system and an electric engine, but he was pressured into using an internal combustion engine to burn the gasoline which was an unwanted component of the local oil industry. This overcame the problem and the early cars were set up so that they could run on either gasoline or on alcohol produced by some 50,000 farmers scattered around the country. When the oil industry excludes the farmers and had all of the profits for themselves, then prohibition was introduced not to stop people drinking alcohol, although that was the pretext, but in reality to shut down the 50,000 alcohol stills which were their competition. When the stills were gone, then prohibition was dropped as it had achieved its goal of vehicle fuel monopoly. The patents of Charles Garrett and Archie Blue are attached below in this document.